Hi, uh, my name is Kenneth Bailey. I'm the PI for the genomic study. This is an introductory video to show you how to uh, set up a site and recruit a patient. So this video is for healthcare workers who are uh, aiming to set up recruitment in their intensive care unit or high dependence unit to genomic. Um, so you should already have ethical approval in your area and R&D approval from your hospital management to recruit patients. The genomic study uh, aims to learn two things about critically ill patients. Uh, one, what genetic factors make them more likely to get critically ill, and two, uh, what genetic factors alter their chance of surviving critical illness. And to do that, we have um, decided on some fairly narrow uh, selection criteria for patients with critical illness. And they are patients who are previously in good shape, so lacking functionally limiting comorbid illness, and present with one of the syndromes that are described in our inclusion criteria. Okay, so uh, at the start of setting up your site, uh, the genomic team will send you a stack of these sample boxes that are pre-labeled with our laboratory address. and. Uh, We'll send you um, instructions on how to set up a site file in which you'll keep the important study documentation and consent forms for patients that you recruit. So in this video, what we're going to do is show you how to recruit an imaginary patient to the genomic study. So when we go to set up the study in your centre, you'll receive um, a stack of sample boxes and we'll ask you to create your own local site file. And here's Lucy Barclay, the senior research nurse coordinating the genomic study, to talk you through the contents of our site file. Hello, hi. So um, the site file uh, needs to be let, kept in a locked room um, because it contains the consent forms which are held locally at each site. Um, we would require um, a kind of index made up. We, we will send you an, an index of what paperwork is required but it's um, such things as uh, the current protocol, um, a copy of each um, patient information sheet that you have, um, including the, the relevant consent forms for each um, sheet uh, PIS that you have. Um, it would also keep your delegation log if, you, uh, if that is required by your R&D um, locally. Um, this is uh, the, any other paperwork that we send you, so including a copy of the OID, that would all be kept in the site file. So any paperwork, um, if you file it in, under the uh, title that we will give you. Great. Can you show us a so, few of the, yeah. the things that are in our site file, Lucy? Um, so we have the uh, protocol, um, including any superseded protocols. Oh, um, and then we have a participant information sheet. Sorry. Um, for each um, uh, section that you, that you have, so if you if it covers paediatrics, it might be quite a few because of, there's quite a few few different types of information sheets for, for paediatrics depending what age they are. Um, we also have our consent forms, um, the OID or the IRIS form um, for us because we have been doing this for a couple of years now, um, and any R and D letters as well. Um, so anything from your local R&D, anything from um, Edinburgh and from the study in general would get filed in here. Um, and approvals um, and any other certificates that, that you may receive from us. Um, I think that is, is most of what we would require locally and if there's anything that your R&D is specific about in your local area then you'd file that in here as well. That last thing you stopped on there was the delegation mode. Yep. Lucy, so that's something that we would create locally and hold locally? Yes, so if you could create a delegation log as uh, required by uh, your local R&D site and if you could keep that updated but keep it locally, it's uh, not required to be sent in to us at Genomic. And our site file happens to be absolutely massive but that's because we don't really care about the environment and we um, have quite, <laughs> quite cheap we, 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 we do and we've also got um, a few extra things in here from, from being um, one of the Scottish sites as well. So, um, But for the English sites, it's, we, we're hoping it will be considerably less than this is. Thanks very much. Should we talk through the contents of these um, boxes as well, just to show what we're proposing people do. Yeah. So. so you'll receive a stack of these boxes from us. They are uh, prepaid and addressed and um, you will receive a strip of um, labels 
Um, there will be one label per tube of blood. There's uh, a few here, there's, there's four labels. Um, depending on your uh, sampling um, hardware, you may need um, one or two of these. Um, and another one you can put onto the consent form so that it can all be um, tracked quite easily. There will also be all the packaging that is required to send um, tissue samples, so an absorbent pad in the, in the plastic paper. It seals up, and then once the box is all sealed, um, there's a security tag here just to seal the whole box with and then pop it into the outgoing um, mail. It doesn't need to be um, kept in a fridge. It's fine to be stored at ambient temperature for, for a day or two if required. Okay, once a patient has been given the information sheet and signed the consent form, um, you can then take a blood sample. Um, we are using EDTA tubes. Um, on this site, it's three tubes of 2.7 mils each, but that can vary depending on your, your blood tube system. Um, you can take it from uh, an A-line, so you just fill each tube up. Or you can also take it from a central line, um, or if these um, sampling ports aren't available, you can also use phlebotomy, um, obviously with the, the, the patient being okay with that. Um, so once you have the, the blood in the tube, you then um, can package it up um, in one of the postage boxes which we sent to you. Okay, once you have your blood samples um, drawn up, you can then take any of the boxes that we have sent you. Um, inside there is a line of labels and if you attach these securely to each blood tube, And the um, extra um, sticky label can then be put onto the consent form and this then uh, includes the patient number on the consent form on all the blood tubes so it keeps everything together. You can then package up the, the blood tubes into a plastic envelope. Everything that is required to post them is in, in there. Um, and the package then gets sealed up. Taking off the foil, it's very sticky, and there it is, sealed up, popped in the box, close the box up, seal it with the security seal provided. And then you can just put it into the out tray. Um, it can be left at ambient temperature for a couple of days, um, for example, over the weekend if you got a sample on Friday evening. Um, and there's nothing else that you need to do with the sample that gets posted to Edinburgh and processed there. So no processing at sites at all. So once you've obtained consent from the relative or their family member, um, this will need to be stored in the site file which you previously made up, just with the, all the other consent forms. The site file is of course kept uh, in a locked office and the consent forms will be um, kept indefinitely by the site. So the genomic study is funded by the Fiona Elizabeth Agnew Trust, a trust set up by relatives and patients, by the Intensive Care Society and by the Wellcome Trust. The study coordinator is Fiona Griffiths, she will be uh, your main point of contact for everything to do with setting up the study. Genomic has three different components and we're only talking about one just now. So Genomic has prospective recruitment, that's what we'll be talking about and that's what we're operating in your centre. Um, retrospective recruitment, we have approval to do but are not currently funded to do. Uh, and repeat sampling, where we ask patients who met our criteria and survived critical illness to come back and give us another blood sample. That's also not currently operating in your centre but we might get in touch with you about that at some point in the future. Good morning Mr Bailey, my name is Lucy Barclay, I'm a research nurse in the intensive care unit. When you were in intensive care, you took part in a research study that we're running and I've come to see if you are happy to continue taking part in the study. How are you feeling today? Well, as it happens Lucy, I'm still mildly delirious with a high CRP and a resolving pyrexia, so I don't think I'm competent to have a discussion about this just now. 
Okay, are you happy if I come and discuss it with you in another week? Yes, if that's your pragmatic decision about how likely uh, it is that I'll, I'll recover during that time, then I think that's an appropriate period to wait. Yeah, I think it's, it's reasonable to come and see you next week. Thank you, nice to meet you. Okay. Good morning, Mr Bailey. Good morning. My name's Lucy, I'm a research nurse in the intensive care unit. When you were in the intensive care unit, we asked permission from your wife for you to take part in a research study. I've come to see if you are still happy to continue in that research study and to give you some information about it. Awesome. How are you feeling today? Feeling great. I'm, in your judgment, competent to participate in research. Okay, well, if I can give you the information sheet about the study, um, what I will do is I'll leave you to have a read of that if you're happy, um, and then I'll come back maybe in a few hours um, and can discuss that with you and answer any questions that you have and clarify any points and then we can go through the consent process and, and get you formally consented to the research study. Thank you very much. Okay, I shall see you shortly. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you for taking part in the study. Hello, Ms Bailey. I gave you an information sheet about a research study a couple of hours ago. Have you had a chance to read it? And if you have, do you have any questions about the study? So yes, I have, uh, and I, I think I understand it. Uh, it looks like a really exciting piece of work. I'd be very keen to contribute to this. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. We really appreciate that. Um, so I will now go and get a consent form and we'll all sign that and that will be officially in the study. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for taking part in Genomic. Thanks very much indeed for watching. Um, we're very uh, grateful for your efforts recruiting to the genomic study. We understand that it, uh, these patients usually come along at difficult, uh, busy times. Um, and it's quite an effort to recruit them. Uh, if you want any more information about the study, uh, Fiona Griffiths is uh, the first point of contact and Lucy and I are both available to answer clinical questions. Uh, please have a look at the information on the genomic.org website about setting up your site um, and the frequently asked questions section. Um, and if there's anything else that we can clarify, we'll be delighted to do so. Thank you very much indeed.